GS1 presents Getting It Right. Barcodes have become an essential tool in improving industry sector efficiency throughout the supply chain. Barcodes are the key to automated processes throughout the retail sector. In dispatch, transportation, warehousing, reordering, invoicing, and payment. Not just in the retail store itself. The GS1 barcode is the longest established and most widely used barcode. It is an indispensable product marking method that is found on virtually every consumer product in the world. That little beep that people associate with the checkout of a supermarket is a laser scanning device reading the information encoded in a GS1 barcode symbol. You would probably congratulate yourself if you had a 99% success rate in a key aspect of your business. But when it comes to barcodes, even a 1% error rate can be costly. A 99% scanning success rate might sound great, but that's also a 1% error rate. If a company scans 6 billion items every year, then a 1% error rate means 60 million scanning failures. It has been estimated that the cost of handling non-scannable outer cases alone within an automated distribution center is somewhere between 40 to 60% of the cost of the case itself. With just the major grocery retailers handling several hundred million cases every month, it is easy to see how even a 1% failure rate adds significant cost to the supply chain. And if you consider the high probability of non-scannable products being returned to the supplier for relabeling or resupply, then it is easy to see that barcode quality is a problem worth taking seriously. If it scans wrong at the checkout, then most likely the information is wrong at every spot in the supply chain. That means automatic reordering systems won't replenish supplies the way they should. And then the manufacturer, the distributor, and the customer all miss out. If we are going to let the computer do the work, then the barcodes have to be right. Good barcodes also benefit suppliers by improving the accuracy of invoicing and payment systems. When all the information is recorded accurately, there are fewer disputes and delays over payment. Getting better barcodes is not the main focus of a retailer's business, which is to have the right products for their customers. But if it hasn't got a good barcode on it, then they can't sell it. The goal for the whole industry should be barcodes that scan right first time every time. As companies invest more in automatic goods handling systems, their suppliers may find that the sanctions against poor barcode quality become more severe, with fines and delisting appearing in the options. Make sure you have all the information you need and build in processes that will allow you to actively benefit from barcode scanning. Using a quality control checklist will have an immediate and dramatic effect on your barcode product label quality and significantly reduce the number of scanning failures. The QC checklist should form part of your normal ongoing product development and quality control procedures. Each and every product in your range should be checked against this checklist in order to ensure that all the barcodes marked on goods are correct in every way. Data content, symbology, position, and print quality. It ensures that printed barcodes comply with the specified standards and provides the reassurance to all that the barcode symbol will scan correctly throughout the supply chain, leading to untroubled supplier-customer relationships. Before you even get to print a barcode on your products, the first thing you need to do is to identify each product or consumer unit with a number. This number is called a Global Trade Item Number, or GTIN. It is unique all over the world and is a key to access information about your products in a database. To correctly identify all your products, you first need to list all of them, including their variants. Make sure you go into the finer details like color, size, and volume. 
Once your list is done, you then need to allocate a unique GTIN to each different product. Using your list of GTINs, allocate sequentially. I remember when we were trying to identify all our products with a GTIN. We decided to put meaning into the numbers we were giving to our products. I remember the first digit would correspond to the color of the wine, the second would correspond to the size of the bottle. Pretty quickly we realized that it was definitely not the right thing to do, because we quickly ran out of numbers and had to apply for another prefix from GS1. GS1 recommends assigning numbers without any link to product classification. Once the number is correctly allocated, you can move to the next item on the checklist, the barcode symbol. For all products sold through a retail point of sale, the correct barcode symbol to use is EAN or UPC. These can be scanned successfully in the point of sale environment. Just as there are standards for the identification of products and the correct type of symbol to be used, so there are standard recommendations for the best place to locate the barcode on your product. For point of sale scanning, the general rule is based on the need for speed and efficiency through the till point. The barcode symbol must therefore be placed where it can be easily seen and found by the operator. In other words, in a standard and predictable place. The general recommendation for barcode symbol placement is on the lower right quadrant on the back of the product. Respect the proper quiet zones around the symbol and ensure that the barcode is not closer than 8 millimeters or farther than 100 millimeters from the nearest edge of the package. While this is the general recommendation, in practice, there are large numbers of trade items, all with different dimensions, shapes, and configurations. Each may have their own unique challenges, so it's necessary to be aware of what to avoid. Do not print a barcode that appears wrapped around the corner of a product. Do not overwrap or cover the barcode with any type of wrapper, even transparent plastic. Do not print a barcode on any seams or wrinkles. Scanning is most successful when a barcode is printed on a flat surface. Good placement of a barcode symbol starts at the product and label design stage. A good designer considers the final product's shape and size and then takes into account the practical operation of scanning. Always check is the symbol located logically and practically? Compare your product packaging with a similar one and see how easily it can be scanned by the cashier at the point of sale. Correct orientation of the barcode symbol is important for good scanning performance. The term orientation refers to the direction of the barcode symbol bars in relation to the surface on which the package stands in its normal position. It is normally determined primarily by the print process and any curvature of the product itself. There are two types of orientation, picket fence and ladder. Picket fence is the first choice for barcode symbol orientation. It means that bars are vertical to the surface on which the package stands in its normal position. The human readable number beneath the symbol reads from left to right. This type of orientation is used on products such as boxes of cereal, bags of chips, or detergent packaging. When a barcode symbol is printed onto a curved surface, it is possible that the symbol seems to disappear around the curve and is distorted to the view from the scanner. In this situation, the symbol must be printed in ladder orientation. It means that the bars are parallel to the surface on which the package stands in its normal position. Ladder orientation is recommended for cylindrical products such as bottles and other similar objects. The human readable number beneath the symbol can be read either from the top down or from the bottom up, whichever is consistent with other text and graphics on the package. Once again, it is the job of the product and label designer to ensure that the correct orientation is chosen and used for the specific specific shape and type of product. 
The quiet zone is the solid light area to the left and the right of the barcode. These areas are very important as they enable the scanner to recognize where the barcode begins and ends. The width of the quiet zones depends on the size of the barcode. The larger the barcode, the wider the quiet zones. Insufficient quiet zone areas can cause scanning difficulties. You need to ensure that the quiet zone areas are kept clear of any text, graphics, watermarks, or logos. The usual size for an EAN 13 barcode symbol used in retail is 22.85 millimeters by 37.29 millimeters. When looking at this barcode, it should appear over square. If the symbol looks like a rectangle, the barcode has been truncated. Never truncate the barcode, as this vertical height reduction can greatly affect the barcode's ease of scanning. When you see a till point operator try multiple times to scan a product, chances are the symbol has been truncated. So, if you can't shorten a symbol, can you make it bigger or smaller than the optimum size of 100%? The answer is yes. The target size or magnification is 100%, but the standards allow for a maximum of 200%. However, keep barcodes in the 80% to 120% magnification range if print quality allows. It's useful to note that when printing barcodes smaller than 100%, the printing tolerances are much tighter, and you must use high-quality printing processes. Barcodes must be printed so that the darker bars appear against a paler background. It is not possible to read a barcode if it is reversed out, that is, printed with white bars against a colored background. Scanners measure the difference in contrast between the bars and spaces using red light, and it is important to use colors that will maximize this contrast. Black bars against a white background is the best choice, but we understand that color has an important role to play in the overall look of your product. So we have some tips for you that will allow you to incorporate the right colors into your barcodes. Warm colors such as yellow, red, orange, and white are not seen by the scanner and are good for background colors. Cold colors such as green, blue, violet, and black make a good choice for bars as they appear dark under red scanning light. Metallic surfaces and inks reflect light away from the scanner, so scanning is extremely difficult. If using a transparent or semi-transparent substrate, do not rely on the color of the contents of the packaging to provide a background color. Print a background in white, yellow, orange, or red to provide a solid contrast with the bars of the symbol. It is not always necessary to introduce black as an extra color if the existing colors used in the packaging design can provide a scannable combination. It is important that the bars be printed using a solid color, no matter what type of printing process is used. With the increase in use of technology and computerized graphics, more and more designers are using integrated software packages to create images of barcodes as part of the packaging design, and these, used correctly, can produce good symbols. However, it's of utmost importance that the designer consult the printer who will be printing the labels. Different print technologies have different impacts on the final production of the barcode symbol. For example, the bars of a printed symbol will usually be wider than the bars on the original design. This increase in width is known as print gain, and allowances need to be made for this on the design. It is not possible to check visually whether print gain or print loss has occurred during the printing process. The only way to adequately address this point is to verify your barcodes. Verification measures the printed quality of the barcode to international ISO standards and is done using a piece of equipment called a verifier. A verifier is a scientific device 
taking precise measurements of each individual bar and space and the amount of light reflected from each. It is all very well knowing that your barcode is incorrect, but a verifier must be able to identify the problem to allow you to take the necessary corrective action. It is therefore important to use an ISO grade bar code verifier. Scanning is no substitute for verification as no two barcode readers are identical. They vary from wands to lasers to cameras from manually operated to automatic. Ambient light will vary as will the distance of scanning. At its most basic level, verification is an insurance policy helping to assure you that your barcode will scan first time at all levels in the supply chain, thus enhancing your supplier-customer relationship. But it's more than that. As part of an effective quality assurance system, it can help you win business. Where do you get help with verification? Check with your local GS1 organization. If they provide a verification service or if they have accredited alliance partners who can assist you. Your local GS1 organization can also help by providing a provisional artwork verification report before the packaging design is finalized. Having information about a product's barcodes prior to the final printing is a valuable opportunity to reduce any errors in the final print run and benefits everyone involved, including printers. However, please remember that the provisional report does not check the scannability of the finished package and label, so a final verification report is also required. By incorporating verification into your quality assurance systems, you can ensure that your barcodes read first time every time. It is good practice to assign the role of Symbol Quality Manager to a specific individual in the organization. Their primary objective will be to ensure good quality barcode. Let's get it right and ensure our products scan first time, every time, with no problem.